Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. It is currently hoofing it down with rain, and we need to just tidy up the sheep. We could also do with tidying up the yard and putting a few things away. And for those of you who are ever on the ball, you may have noticed that there is a little bit more money on the grand total than there was a little while ago. That is because we are going to hop, skip, and jump over to here, and we are going to purchase a milk tanker. And the reason we're doing it like this is because we're not actually owning the milk tanker. This is going to be done the same way as we do the other stuff. So I've added 68,000. We will get a standard milk tanker like this. We can have either a chrome, a stainless steel, or a black. I will stick with chrome like that, and we will buy there. Job done. That one belongs to the dairy. So we won't actually own that one. That one belongs to the dairy. It will just be parked up, and it will be used to transfer milk from the um, cattle point to the sell point to represent the merchant coming in and getting it. Now, it has been... It was pointed out in a comment that it would be really unrealistic... For a large tanker to come in to collect a small amount of milk from a farm. And yes, sort of. However, I live in a part of the world where it's almost all small farmers. And you don't get just a tanker for one farm. The tanker actually goes around a number of different farms. And keeps going around the different farms until he's got a full load of milk and then goes back to the dairy. And then empties out and then goes back out again, runs around the different farms and loads up again. And if they know that they've got a farm that has got a lot of milk on it, uh, more than a tanker full, what they will sometimes do is they'll go around several small farms in the area and collect the small bits of milk. And then they will go and top up at the large dairy farm and then... Uh, go off and then they'll come back later on and they will take the rest from the large dairy farm at a later point um, So the fact that we've got a large tanker coming through You know, I really shouldn't go around the corner too fast with this machine the fact that we've got a large tanker coming through and Taking our milk away is not unrealistic not on um, Not in relation to that because the tanker wouldn't just be going to one single farm. The tanker would, in fact, be going to a number of different farms. It wouldn't just be ours. So that bit is quite realistic. It is what you would expect. Now, why is this one waving around as much as it is at the moment? Some days it does this a lot. Some days it doesn't do it at all. I'm never really quite sure what's going to happen with that one. I'm going to leave it there for a minute, though. I don't want to do anything else with it for a second, because I uh, the only thing I want to do is just move it out the way, because I want to be able to get this on here. I'm going to go and grab that one right there and hook you on like that. And then I want to tidy up the animals. And then we want to skip the night, because we can't do any work in the fields today. We want to get the planting going. We want to get the planting started. And we can't do that until the rain stops. So we need to wait until tomorrow when rain has stopped and the ground's a bit drier. I mean, yes, technically it would take longer than that for the ground to dry out. But uh, let's, let's be honest here. Um, the game, we're looking at about three months per day in game. So I think we're probably going to be all right with waiting just overnight with the rain i don't think we need to worry about waiting any longer than that now how are we doing with the animals if we have a look in here food is absolutely fine for them and food is absolutely fine for them so i will just use the bucket to clear this up it's not an ideal situation using the bucket for this one because it's smaller than the grab that i would and uh, not the grab the the um the muck fork that I would normally use. However, it does still work. It does still do the job. We can take a bucket full from here, and then I can simply plonk it right out in front of me like that. And then I can do the same again, and we can get the rest of this material loaded up. Like this. There. Scoop up the whole lot. And do it in two. 
I don't think I'd actually be able to get the whole lot in one using the bail grab thing anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one here like this. Now, for the rams, the protection for the rams, you would want to leave it like that. Yeah, down as low as you can with it curled right back so that the rams themselves are covered up. You want as small a quantity of silver showing as you can possibly have. However, for the benefit of the bucket, you need to leave it something like that. So you kind of need to do a best of both worlds situation in this. So that you don't have water pooling in the bucket. So it needs to be slightly slanted forwards like that. And then leave it like that. That's kind of what you would do. So that you don't have water sitting in the bucket. It just drains out. But you also don't have the rams being left exposed unnecessarily. There is still some being exposed there. Now, if you weren't being lazy, what you would actually do is you would take the bucket off. And then you would put the tractor down like that. And it's I've been told it's better to leave the tractor in a straight line for the power steering on the front. Um, some farmers do actually go as far as leaving it full lock one way one night, full lock the other way the next night, but that does involve having a pretty good memory to remember which way round you left your wheels. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't really know on that front. Um, I've always been one for leaving the wheels in a straight line whenever I've parked up. Um, but yeah, I, I would guess that there are arguments on both sides for that particular one, which is best for the um, the different bits, which is best for the rams, uh, which prolongs the life of them the most, which prolongs the life of the seals the most. Who knows? I, I, I really couldn't say on that particular one. I have no idea. And I'm just going to go here and we're going to clean this one off. I am going to start speeding time up a little bit faster now. We'll go to full 120 times speed. While we clean this one off and the tractor off, so then the tractor is going to be ready to start doing the um, planting in the morning. We've got a field of corn that we need to plant. That is the only other only other thing that we needed to buy. We've got the rest of the materials. We've got the um, we, we've got the combine. We've got the header on the combine for for uh, harvesting. Right, we, we've, we've got everything. The only thing that we didn't have was that planter, and we've now got that planter. So this here can go back round, and we will just... Actually, you know, I don't think we need to worry about repairing the cultivator. So I'll go and put the cultivator in the shed, and then I want to get the... Actually, what do I want to do? I want to put the cultivator away in the shed, and then I was thinking of something else that I do need to do. And I can't remember what it is. I think we can put the cultivator in here and then we'll put the baler in next to it we'll bring you in round like that cultivator can go in the back of the shed like this is that going to lower it is going to lower down folded up excellent i always forget which ones lower down folded up and which ones don't the combine still needs to be washed so that it can be put away i'm not going to worry about that just yet the front weight on this one needs to be taken off oh that was the other thing that i wanted to do I want to come over here because we don't want the wheels with weights for doing this planting job. So I'm just going to stop you right there like that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take you a little bit closer. I'm going to take you in around this side for a very specific reason. I'm going to put you around over to there and stop you. And then we will deal with that in the morning because it is bedtime. So we'll go over to here. We will get our... Oops. Get our 11 hours of kip like this. We're going to sleep in a little bit late in the morning, I believe. 7 o'clock we're supposed to get going. And it's 20 past 7 already. I'm going to let time tick by a little bit just to keep it going a bit further. But no, what I wanted to do... I'll repair the front weight a second. And I will repair the tractor a second. Uh, but then I want to customize. We don't want weights. We don't want excessive amounts of weight going on the field. Because what we're doing thinking actually these we haven't paid for these yet but because we're planting and we're not right and the front weight can stay there because we're planting on cultivated ground we want to put as little pressure down onto the field as we can possibly get away with this 
is the absolute minimum amount of downward pressure on the field. So using double wheels for a job like this would actually be something that would make sense. You don't just use double wheels for stability on steep ground. You sometimes use double wheels to prevent compaction. I know farmers who plant potatoes, who do quite a lot of potatoes, and every single bit of work that they do in the potato fields from the moment that the plow has been through is done with double wheels. All of it. They, they use double wheels for absolutely every single aspect of it. Um, the only time they're not using double wheels, actually, I think the fertilizer goes in the front tank and the seed goes in the back, doesn't it, for this one? Uh, the only bit where they're not using double wheels, I'm going to put this down to, actually, we want to be one time speed now because we're planting. Um, yeah, the only bit where they're not using double wheels is the plowing. And then after that, it's double wheels the whole time. Double wheels being used the whole time. I actually really, really like the look of that one being opened up. So much so, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to open that up because it brings that front pad out there like that. That's really good. I like that. We want to lower that one down. No, not you. There. I'm going to lower that one down there. That does actually look pretty good. However, I think this is going to look better i think we'll get a bit you know what i'm doing I'm, I'm looking for a picture for the um the thumbnail i i like i frequently do but uh what we will actually use for our thumbnail picture is probably going to be this one working out in the field because this is something that we've not seen before and we've not used the dual wheels before either but yeah they would use dual wheels for absolutely every aspect of it um, apart from the original ploughing, in order to minimise compaction. Well, I say, would they still do? Uh, when I used to see this many years ago, they didn't have an extra wheel. They would put cages on. So it would it was literally just like a, a... You know what round feeders look like? Where you just have a like a cage in a circle with a bale. Um, you can put a bale or put some silage in for the cattle. Yeah, well, they cages on the back of a tractor they look very much like um a round feeder that is what they actually look like you know what i haven't done for the entire series for the entire time that i've been playing this game i haven't used the marker not used the marker once and i'm not intending to start now actually because i don't like the markers they they leave horrible lines everywhere which, especially when you're going around corners, then it, they're not actually very useful, right? They they do leave a mark out on the ground. If you press Z, it actually puts the marker out like that, and then it leaves a line. But if you go over land that you've already done, all it does is dig up the seed that you've gone and put down, which is why I don't like them. So I don't generally... That's why I don't use them. And I haven't been using them for the... Uh, entire time I've been playing FS19. I used I used to use them a bit for some of the other series. I think I used them... I don't know if I used them in FS17 at all. I did use them in FS15 to start with. But no, I haven't used them at all in this. And I don't regret that decision. I, I know that it's not entirely realistic. Although these days everybody uses GPS anyway. Like seriously, how many of you who are actually farmers still use crop markers? Uh, not crop markers. Um, the... Seed drill markers. How many of you use the the row markers on the seed drill anymore? Does anybody use them? Because I've I've not seen a seed drill working in a field that has uh, the person has been using a marker not for a very long time. Um, I mean may, maybe there are still people out there that do it. I don't know. Anyway, the the dual wheels. So these, I, I have seen a number of the tractors where the cages are put on. The cage doesn't stick, like it doesn't go down into the ground quite as much as the actual main wheel, but it's not far off of it. And so the tractor goes into the field, the cages are quickly bolted onto the outside of the wheels and then the tractor does the work. The advantage of using cages is that they're quite light and so they're fairly easy for one man to put onto the tractor though usually you don't have one man doing it you would have two people doing it um 
person who brings the cages to the field and then the person who's driving the actual tractor and it's you're able to load them up onto a trailer you can pick them up between the two of you and put them onto the trailer by hand in order to put them onto the tractor it's quite straightforward as well you simply drive the tractor up onto a couple of blocks which you would already have with you on the trailer and uh, that puts that wheel up into the air and then you can lift the cage up as however you need to and then get it bolted into position and then to take it off again you do exactly the same in reverse you drive it up onto the block and then you can undo the um, things that are fastening it in place so the big advantage of cages is that it is really really easy to get them in position and get them onto your machine whereas with actual extra wheels like we've got here yes you can still do it but it requires a lot more effort and you're not going to simply pick those wheels up and dump them on a trailer for moving from one field to the next now I do live in a part of the world where it's physically not possible to drive along the roads with dual wheels on so I mean you wouldn't be able to do that with cages anyway uh, road laws would prevent you from doing that because they're not pneumatic tires so you're not allowed to drive on the road with them um, but the um, the width of it would prevent you from being able to drive on the roads anyway you you simply would not be able to get along the road with that kind of width on your machine you've got to put them on and take them off in the field in order to be able to um like you, even just to be able to get in and out of the gateways i mean yeah there's probably several gateways that you would be able to get through with various different farms that um on that particular point you would be all right but for the most part no you wouldn't you would not be going through the gateways you wouldn't be able to get up and down the roads it, it just wouldn't happen and so using cages is a good compromise because they're very very easy to take on and off in the fields now if you're not in a in, in an area where you've got to constantly take them on and off for every field you work in and you are in fact able to go put the wheels on at the beginning of the day or beginning of the week and then just leave them on and work through your bigger fields which will take a day or two to work through anyway and then move from field to field without having to stop and take them off then it would be worth having the pneumatic tires like this that um you know it, it spreads the load slightly more easily more evenly um the cages whilst they take some of the pressure off they definitely don't spread the pressure perfectly evenly between the two items on the back like the between the tire and the cage itself uh they they take some pressure off but not all of it it is a vast improvement on not having a cage on there at all and you can tell that just by looking at the tracks that tractor has made as it drives up and down across the field it's leaving pressure points where the cage was and it wouldn't be doing that if the cage was not having any effect at all so it's definitely beneficial and if you've gone and worked your ground into or you've started working your ground into a fine tilth in order for doing some planting you're the last thing you're going to want is tractor tires uh what well, will tire marks up and down across your field leaving compressed points all the way through for doing your planting for doing your cultivating and all of that because it's it's gonna it's gonna compress the soil down which means that your potatoes are not going to grow as well or your carrots are not going to grow as well um and I know farmers that will do this on any ground that they have gone and cultivated uh, or from after from the point that ploughing has started then you've got to have cages on and cages are as standard across the board or cages or uh, dual wheels whatever um, in order to spread out the, and, and avoid compaction now another alternative is one that i use in this game frequently i have them on almost all the time and that's the wide tires and we use the wide tires because they do exactly what cages do they alleviate some of the compression compared to, and compaction compared to just the standard tractor tires i believe the order of benefit goes um 
Standard tyre, well, obviously narrow crop tyres would be the worst ones, but you certainly wouldn't use those for anything other than spraying or working between the rows of crops. So that's like a specialist tyre. Uh, then you've got standard tractor tyres. Then you've got wide tractor tyres. Then you've got the tractor with the cages. And then finally, you've got the tractor with the extra full wheels on like this. Um, and yes, and in between, you've got the just the full wheels on the back and uh, the, the double wheels on the back and uh, the double wheels front and back. Um, for a situation like we're using right now, using the front double tyres is beneficial because we've got all that extra weight. We've got two tonnes of fertiliser on the front. Well, 2,000 litres. I think there's actually more than two tonnes. Um, but we'll, just for simplicity's sake, I know that that's not the exact weight because it's done in litres, but for simplicity's sake, we will call it two tonnes. So we've got two tons of fertilizer on the front. Having the extra weight distribution on the front is definitely a good idea. It's going to be beneficial to the machine all round. Now I've only been twice round this field and we're already down to 35% on our grain tank. So we're going to be using quite a bit of seed to do this. Well, I say quite a bit of seed. I mean, let's be honest here, we don't get much seed in a row crop planter, do we? It loads up with fertilizer, and it's the same with all of them. They load up with fertilizer, but they don't take very much seed in them. And I've never really understood the logic of that. Why can't we have very much seed in a row crop planter? Why are we not allowed to have very much seed? Why can't we put a slightly bigger tank on for the seed and then have, like, the... the extra benefit for, for both of them. Why has it got to be the fertilizer is the only bit that gets to be fully loaded up? See, I've got 600 litres there for seed, and i got 2,000 litres for fertilizer. Why is that? I mean, yeah, I don't have to load fertilizer from the beginning to the end, but I don't really think that that's a huge benefit if I'm still having to stop every 30 seconds to reload the actual seed in the machine. So there, there is definitely pros and cons on this. Now, I'm going to bring you up here like this. I'm going to swing you on round. We have done pretty well so far. Bring you up to this point right here, and I'm going to get started on there. Then I'm going to go and have a look in here, and we're going to see what the seed is doing. We've got growth on there, and fertilizer. Fertilizer is coming out absolutely beautifully. We're fully fertilized up on the top up there. So all we've got to do is wait for planting. And then once planting is done, the only other thing that we've got left to do... There we go. Now that is a thumbnail picture. That's the one that we're going to be using. I know this. I can feel it in my waters. Um, yeah, the only other thing that we've got to do is put herbicide on this field. And then once the herbicide is done, this field can be... Uh, we can simply just close the gate and wait for it to grow. We don't need to worry about it any more after that. I'm just going to watch this a little bit. We'll let it come down to the end of the field and turn around and come back up again. And then we're going to take a hop, skip and a jump back over to the yard. And we're going to start putting away some of the machinery in the yard and get that tidied away properly. Once we've done that, then we can go back to the tree harvester and we can start chopping down a few more trees. I don't know if we're going to get to the trees today. We're definitely going to be doing a little bit of the work in here this this thing does it does look very very cool doesn't it that does look very very cool look at this thing the dual wheels always look impressive they always look impressive and i always think it looks really weird having just dual wheels on the back and not on the front and yeah i know that there are situations where if you haven't got a lot of extra weight on the front but you want to um just have a bit of weight distribution it would be a good idea not to have the jewels on the front because it's putting a lot of extra strain on the power steering. So if possible, you do want to try and avoid having the extra strain going on that power steering if if you can. If you can. Um, but for our situation right here with that extra weight that we got on the front right there, all that fertilizer in that front tank, we definitely need the extra weight distribution. Um, and so we are having to make a small sacrifice on the uh, power steering so that we gain the weight distribution that we so desperately need. You can carry on over there. This one here, we start up our IMT533. And we'll go and put this one away in the shed. 
So very, very similar to the Massey 35. The only difference is that I can see on it, if this is accurately modelled, are the hitches on the back. That is the only difference, is that the hitch is done slightly differently on the back for the IMT than it is for the Massey 35. And yes, I know that it is a Massey 35, in theory. It is a rebuilt Massey. Well, it's it's not rebuilt. It's it's made under license by the... I have to remember what it's called. Is it the International Machinery Company? I think, I think it's the International Machinery Company. Uh, no, uh, in International Machine Tractor. I can't remember now. I, 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 I have seen what it's called several times. You know what? I'm going to have to go and look this up a second. Not in, not international at all. Industry of Machinery and Tractors. That's who it is. Industry of Machinery and Tractors. That is the name of the company based in Yugoslavia. Um, well, that's where they, like, they, they were originally based in Yugoslavia. I don't know where they're based now. And that was the name of the company. It was the in, uh, Industry of Machinery and Tractors. And they made the IMT under license from Massey Ferguson. Uh, so they took the Massey 35 and then they made it for Eastern Europe. So you had the Eastern European market being covered by it. So we're going to stop you right there. And then we're going to jump to... Uh, actually, we're going to jump to the Combine and we're going to get this one done. We need to put this one away. And do that, and I'm. Um, you know what we haven't done? We've skipped the night a bit, and we've not paid attention to the oat price. Nine hundred and seventeen. I think we went above a thousand. Please tell me in the comment section if we went above a thousand for oats. I think we did. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep holding out for oats. Uh, silage. We've now decided that we're not gonna sell. And wool is currently nine eight four. That's dropping down again. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we did go. We did see a price above a thousand for oats, so I'm gonna hold out at the moment. It might be that we didn't see above a thousand. If we didn't, then you know, I apologise. We need to be above nine hundred for selling. Uh, but I am pretty certain that we did get above one thousand at one point. I mean, does anybody remember? Because I don't. I don't actually fully remember. Um, if anybody. I, I, I'm constantly seeing so many different prices that, that I'm, I'm not actually 100% sure. But I, I am certain that I've seen that above a thousand. I really am. I'm absolutely positive I've seen it above a thousand at one point. If I haven't, then I could be missing out on a really good price right now, being above 900. Um, I mean that, that is still a pretty good price, right? We've got uh, what did I? What, what have we got? What have we got in way of we got 87,000. Um, so we we got about eighty thousand dollars if we sell right now. Eighty grand is not to be sniffed at. Not really. That's 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 pretty good. That's going to put us up to over three hundred thousand dollars, which is very very close to actually being. Uh, wait a minute, over three hundred thousand. That's not very close to being able to get the animal pen, the cattle pen, is it? That is actually being able to afford the cattle pen. We're already very close to the pig pen we're getting very close to being able to buy both of them that's that's what we we, we just simply say that we're getting very very close to being able to buy both of them. um i need to reset those three to the shop i'll do that and say we'll put the combine away and then we can reset those to the shop this combine is now being cleaned i didn't service the combine i will need to do that I won't do it now, though. I'm going to put it away in the shed. I want to just... I want to put this one away and I want to have it done with. So you can drive into the shed in there. Like that. And I'll lower you down. Bring you in like that so that you're not hitting that one. There. Right. We shut you off there. That one is doing an absolutely wonderful job. At least I'm hoping he is. I'm going to jump up on here out of the way. He is doing a wonderful job. He's got 50% seed on him still, so he can keep going with that. He's spun round beautifully and admirably right there, so we don't need to worry about it. We've got this one here to put away. 
We've got the baler to put away and a mower to put away. I'm just going to go into here. We zoom in a little bit like this and we take that one and reset that one to the shop like that. Okay. And then that one, that's the baler. I don't want that. I want this one over here. I want to reset that one to the shop. Okay. And then I want to reset that to the shop as well. And then as soon as we've got the cows... We'll be using the tractor from the dealership. Uh, the tractor will be using... Well, tractor unit, I suppose. Technically, it is called a tractor unit, isn't it? Um, we'll be using the machine from the dealership. The... Let me just put that one on there. Uh, we'll be using the truck from the dealership to do the milk. So we'll drive that one up over here. And then when we need to get a delivery from the dealership... We can simply reset the truck and go and do the the thingy to represent the dealership coming and get in the truck or the truck being you know a different truck or, or, or whatever. It's 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 role play, it's representing something, it's not actually us using it, that's the important bit that we need to remember. So long as we've got something that can move the milk from our uh, farm just to the sell point to represent the merchant coming in. That's all we need to worry about. Let me just gather up this little bit of grain down here like this. There we go. We've got... And then... That's done there. How are we doing now with our animals? Let's have a look. You're doing alright and you're doing alright as well. I don't need to worry about either of them. They're not going they don't lose percentage points of being slightly low on the amount of food that they've got. So I can leave that exactly as it is. I'll take off this front loader a minute. And then we can deal with the mower and put that one away. And we can also deal with the baler and put that one away as well. I don't want to plonk that onto there. I do have the log grab over here that has been pointed out that we could sell that log grab as well as selling all the other forestry equipment. This is very true. We can do that. Let me... Okay, I, I, I actually need to do that. I meant to press that button there. Um, right, so, yeah. Um, we've got the log grab that we'll be able to sell. And we can, that's another one that we can get rid of. I won't actually reset that one back to the shop because I can't go and manually move it over onto the... I suppose I might be able to with the forklift in order to get the maximum amount of money. But honestly, there's not there's not going to be a lot in it for that. I don't think it's going to be worth the effort of um, getting it all the way over there. That one can just be collected by a... That'll be a private sale picked up by a buyer from somewhere else in the region who needs a log grab. And considering that we don't need one anymore, then this is going to work out very nicely for both of us. There's not, there's not going to be any issues there whatsoever. Now, just a little tiny bit more off of there. And that one is nice and clean and polished. We don't have time today to go and do any more timber cutting. So we'll be doing some timber cutting tomorrow while the tractor is busy working over in the field. I've got that rake to put away and then we've got the baler to clean and put away as well so I'm just going to bring this one round here and get this one put away I'm not sure I'm going to put the rake actually because I don't have room in a shed to put everything because we've got the new seed drill and that new seed drill I would rather put that one under cover than I would put this rake under cover I guess that what we I'll tell you what we can do with the rake the rake can be one of the things that is left elsewhere so I'll bring you over this way like this and the rake can be one of the things that is left over here near the barn and what will happen with it is that it just has a tarpaulin put over it in order to protect it from the elements so you're going to be brought over here and protected from the elements right there I mean I have got the cultivator in the shed I'm going to put that one there. I've got the cultivator in the shed, and previously I put the cultivator outside and then had that one under cover, but I think we can put that one out there and just put a tarp over it. And that's quite a normal thing to do, is to put a tarp over your machinery. But I, I, I suppose, really, the cultivator would be the better option for that. But anyway, I've run out of time for today's episode, so we will have to carry on with this in tomorrow's episode. If you've enjoyed this one, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. 
And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.